Hello, it's Steve White, Steve White 39. Well, we have had some, not surprising, but good news, the Zack Snyder Cut uh, is going to be released. Now, I've sort of wanted to talk about the Zack Snyder Cut for a while, but I didn't really know a lot of the specifics, and I certainly didn't have any um, insight or, um, well, I, no one, there are people, you know, who are being told what was happening on the inside. I'm not one of those people. So I was just sort of watching and thinking, well, that would be interesting because I saw Justice League and I was okay, but I like Wonder Woman and that's it. Um, and I bought it, I saw it once in the cinema and I bought it on DVD and Blu-ray um, just so I can watch it if I want to, but I have not watched it since. Um, and that seems to be the sentiment with a lot of people that they just didn't like it. Now, what happened with the movie was um, they started off with the film being directed by Joss Whedon sorry, Zack Snyder, um, and he had to leave due to personal issues, um, and they brought in Josh, and, or is it Joss? Joss? Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon, and he basically reshot a uh, bulk of the film, which needed reshoots, which included the <sighs> Henry Cavill with the moustache and the infamous CGI to remove it, which was notorious, um, I didn't actually notice in the film. Um, sometimes for a visual pers person and an artist, I'm incredibly unobservant. And I didn't even notice it. Or maybe people are just looking for things that aren't even there. I don't know. I have to watch it one day just to try and spot the, the, the CGI mustache removal. But um, yeah, there were problems. People weren't happy. And I don't know when it started. I don't know if it started during the production because um, people knew what had happened behind the scenes or if it happened after the film. But at some point, people started to demand the Snyder Cut. Because apparently there was an actual cut of the film that Snyder um, completed that wasn't completed but um, was um, assembled that was three and a half hours long and people thought it was better or at least it was different. Um, and people were pushing for a long time for that to be released and initially there was like no question because they're not going to spend money to release an inferior version of a film that's already been released and blah blah blah. But um, and this baffles me. Whenever this situation occurs, it absolutely baffles me because it's happened a few times. Um, it happened with Halloween 6. They, the producer, I think, or who was it? Someone hated Donald Pleasance. They just wanted a, like a young, hip horror movie and here's this old, you know, guy wandering around ranting about this evil guy. You know, he just didn't get what Halloween was and what the fan base was and what the fans wanted. And he basically did his best to reshoot most of the film and cut as much Donald Pleas Pleasance out as they could. Um, and this resulted in the producer's cut being um, leaked online, which was basically the original version of the film. And eventually, after fans bitched and moaned and probably threatened um, <laughs> various people, they eventually got a proper Blu-ray release of the finished um, producer's cut, which is great. And I don't understand the resistance. Gee, I made a film. I spent a shitload of money making a film. I have enough footage to release a second version of that film and have two releases and make twice as much money, potentially. Why don't I do that? I don't understand why it doesn't happen. Um, in the 80s, or late 70s, 80s, there are a lot of movies that had extra footage added to them to sell to TVs. This happened with Superman, this happened to Star Trek The Motion Picture, and it took forever for those versions to actually get official releases. Why? Why? In God's name, they re-released the same film 50 different times with different covers and maybe a different featurette made by some little documentary person. Why on earth just do the, di not on earth do the different versions of the films? I mean, a lot of them, some of them eventually have been done. But why it's not just part of the release strategy? Oh, we did an alternate version, let's release that too. Or let's do a two-disc version with both. How this isn't just the normal thinking, I don't understand. Um, Star Trek The Motion Picture was fairly notorious too. They released, they did the, the TV version where they added a bunch of scenes and one scene had didn't have finished effects, which is fine for a one-off TV broadcast because people are just going to be like, what, did I just see the stage there? That's fine. But then they released that same version on video and called it the extended video version. Well, it was just the TV version released on video. What they should have done was release the extended video version, which would have edited out that shot. So it wasn't repeated in its glorious incompleteness. Um, so, but then we got the director's edition, 
which again was problematic because although they added things, a couple of shots were technically inferior, like um, the the Golden Gate Bridge uh, San Francisco scenes because you can clearly tell they just took a still shot of um, the other side of the bay from um, the ground, not from the sky where the original, it's just, it's just a mess. Um, they need to fix that in the new version. But um, they also, Robert Wise didn't just add things and um, add new sound effects and make things better. He also removed things and shortened some scenes that fans are used to. So now we have two versions and they are both different, but you can't really enjoy one because one is missing elements and one is missing shots. <laughs> um, so they are, they are going to do a, talking about doing a director's edition on Blu-ray, which will hopefully fix some of those elements and maybe give us both versions, an extended version with the extra scenes and the original scenes, anything where something was added, and then perhaps the, the same basically basic version that um, Robert Wise did with the trims, and then maybe a, a third version if we're lucky, which will actually fix everything. Um, but you know, that's a fan dream. So, okay, so we've finally got the Snyder Cut, and all that we know about it, and I've heard this from Grace Randolph, so I'm not sure if how good her sources are, but apparently, and it makes sense, they're releasing on HB Max and the HBO Max. And the only reason why they're doing this is because they need content for S, um, H, HBO Max. I keep wanting to say CBS All Access. Um, so that's the only reason why it happened, because someone convinced someone, gee, if you release this on HBO Max, you'll make money. Now, I'm assuming eventually, uh, because what, but what they're doing, and this is the point that I just missed, is that they're releasing it a, in six 35-minute parts. So it's basically a mini-series. Um, and so long as that means we get all of it, that's great. But um, hopefully we'll also get a DVD Blu-ray release, which will include the entire film edited as one piece. I'm assuming they're smart. They know they can get people to watch HBO Max for the separate parts, and they can get people to buy the Blu-ray. This is where they're getting smarter. They realize, oh, we can have multiple versions of the film with multiple audiences, or maybe everyone just buying everything. This is a good thing. Um, now, another little victory we had was and we didn't win Splash because Splash was edited and this apparently stayed that way. Disney did that. But Netflix, who's a bit more reasonable, they edited out for some bizarre reason a shot of a um, 1950s porn magazine um, that was hidden. I'm not going to go into the story elements because I don't want to spoil a 30-year-old film for someone. But um, basically they cut a couple of shots out and a couple of lines and it was clumsy, it didn't work. Some people say it was a broadcast version that they just put in by accident because very quickly once people complained, it was removed. So Netflix had a boo-boo and they fixed it. This is good. Now, where the same thing is with Sonic. Sonic, um, they created a horrible model. They released it, people hated it, they fixed it. The film did really well because they showed, oh, we respect you fans, we know we're making this for you, we're working for you, not the other way around, um, which unfortunately some studios have it. So the Snyder Cut released, good. Um, Back to the Future 2, fixed, good. Splash, not fixed yet, bad. Um, Disney is not as flexible, Netflix and um, Sony, they actually seem to understand they're working for us. They make the films for us, we pay them, they have money, they put their children through college. That's how it works. Not the other way around, where they make the films and, and we have to go to it and pay them money. No, we don't. We really don't. So um, I'm happy. I'm not a huge fan of the DC films, um, but I get another, another version to watch, which I might like more than the other version. And um, Back to the Future is restored and Netflix has set a precedent of, oh, we made a mistake, we fix it. And the other thing they did, Disney did do, is they um, they restored The Simpsons because they didn't have the original um, aspect ratio and they did fix that, so that's good. So I'm going to go before my camera dies. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks, bye.